Hello, septic tanks. How do septic tanks work? How do you know if your septic tank is full? How do you know if you've got a problem with your septic tank and what can you do about it? I'm going to cover all those things in this video. This is my septic tank and I've spent the last two days excavating it. Now I live in a 400 year old thatched cottage which is just to my right but to my left is a double garage and I'm converting that double garage into ancillary accommodation for the cottage. Bifold doors on the front, timber clad, a bathroom, a bedroom and an office and I'm going to be using this septic tank to service the waste from that building as well as the cottage and you can follow my whole garage conversion journey on my YouTube channel but in this video I'm going to walk you through how an old-fashioned septic tank like this one actually works and because mine was full to the brim I'm going to show you what you can expect to happen when it comes to getting your septic tank emptied. So let's start off by following the path of some waste from the toilet upstairs all the way down the soil pipe through the underground drain into the septic tank and then let's talk about what happens in the septic tank and what happens to the waste after it leaves the septic tank into a soak away. Now in order to track the flow of the water I'm going to flush a tiny apple down the toilet and hopefully we should see this emerge at the other end and incidentally whilst you're watching this video ignore this secondary trench that trench is to get the electric from the house out to the garage now apples are quite buoyant so i'm going to help it by pumping it under the u-bend before i flush now i shall run downstairs that apple will be running down that pipe under the ground through that inspection chamber through the second inspection chamber along the pipe under the ground through the third inspection chamber and then it will be emerging down here in this tank and there is the apple at the bottom of the septic tank and it's organic so i can leave it there it will rot away in the fullness of time now that is after it's just been emptied and so that apple is now deep in that septic tank chamber it's about nine or ten foot deep i have to say now there's all kinds of rules and regulations about septic tanks especially over the period of time when you move house now when i moved here i had a septic tank in my previous house and it had to be inspected and because it didn't soak away onto my own land it had to be replaced now my septic tank soaks away onto my own land so i was able to buy this cottage with this septic tank without having to replace the septic tank with a sewage treatment plant i'm not going to talk about sewage treatment plants in this video this video is just about septic tanks let me tell you a little bit more detail about how they work in particular what goes on inside that very deep chamber now there's a lot of mystique and mystery around sewage and sometimes I can understand how people get a little bit scared or nervous about it but there really isn't any mystery to this there's no high tech to it it's pretty solid state and you can track it so that pipe there comes out of the wall where my toilet is and as it flushes all the waste goes down that pipe and probably develops with the gravity some speed then it goes into an underground pipe under the gravel here and it goes down and you have an inspection chamber here and I've taken the lid off and I know that when I flush the upstairs toilet it rushes past here at a rate of knots now there's a standard minimum fall for these pipes you have to look at the building regulations to make sure that you've got that correct if you're putting a soil pipe in and then it goes past this one and in this one you can see there's another pipe coming in which comes from my downstairs toilet which is just there in that corner so the two join together and continue along the ground along 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 
and there is not another inspection chamber until here. And this is an inspection chamber immediately prior to the septic tank. Same as the other ones, goes through there, out of the end, and then drops through this T-pipe. Now, that T-pipe ensures that the waste falls down to the bottom of this chamber. And this chamber will eventually fill up with water. In the middle of this chamber, there is a brick wall or baffle. And that effectively keeps the fresh waste on that side separate and allows gradually and slowly the waste to seep through. Can you see down there, there are holes in this wall just there, which allow the waste in liquid format to flow through into this second large chamber. By this time, it's pretty much been worked on so much by bacteria and microorganisms on its journey through here that it's effectively water. Dirty water, of course, not drinking water. And that water goes through another T. Now that T there is to stop solids going into the soak away. And you can see that the water will go up from the bottom, down there, into that T and exit the septic tank chamber. And I've dug a trench here and I know that that comes out. Now, in the ideal world, there would be an inspection chamber here, but mine is so old that I don't have one. So that pipe then goes off, turns the corner, goes under, under the ground and goes over there into my lawn, at which point it will divide off into herring bones and that water will just seep down into the grass. Now, what you can do to try and find out where your soak away is, is just walk around your grass and see if there's any damp patches or observe where the grass grows particularly well and you might find where your soak away is. Mine is soaking away down there somewhere. And so you can see from that, that there is no great mystery to it. Flush toilet, waste comes down, sits in that chamber, gets worked on by bacteria, effectively turns into gas and water and sediment. The water drains off and then every 12 months, you get a septic tank company to come in and suck all the sediment from the bottom. They take it away and dispose of it. I've just had mine done. It cost me £200 and it took about an hour. When they turned up. I had already lifted the slabs off. I asked them if they would have done that and they said, in fairness, nowadays regulations are that you've got to do that yourself. Having said that, uh, the guy that came said some people will help you with it. Some of the septic tank drivers will help you with that but it's really not their job to do that. Uh, and then they stick a pipe in there, suck all the waste out, the waste gets taken away. Now mine was filling up and I knew it was filling up because the downstairs toilet, when I flushed it, the waste wasn't going away as quickly as it should. So I took the inspection chamber off and I lifted the concrete slabs off and I realized that it was filling up. And what that indicates is there may be a problem with my soak away. For some reason, it's filling up because the water's not going out at that end. Is that a problem? Well, it might be a problem. I might have to get a rodding company in to rod the soak away. Alternatively, I might have to dig the lawn up and put a new soak away in. Putting in a new soak away isn't a huge, enormous job. It just requires a mini digger. Not covering that in this video. And just a few things to bear in mind if you do decide to move these yourself. Now, these are pretty common sense, but I'm going to tell you them anyway, because this is one of the things that I've learned whilst I've been dealing with my septic tank. They are very heavy. Be careful. Do some warm ups. Don't strain yourself. Bend, lift using your knees, all the usual stuff, but be careful. And if there's any doubt, get some help. Now the guy from the septic tank company says that what they do often is they jemmy them to the side and slide them away. I've lifted mine up vertically and I've lent them against this hedge. If you're going to do that, obviously, make sure that there's a good lean so that they're not going to topple back on you because it very easily could kill you or do some serious harm to you. I've placed all mine on a plank and that's stopping them from sinking into the ground and it's also spreading the weight and stopping it from damaging any pipes. 
there is a vent pipe in the far left hand corner of this septic tank which i imagine is there to let methane out another thing to think about with these concrete slabs is they're very often interlocking they dovetail together so you have to start at one end this end in my case and go along because what you don't want to do is break the concrete where it's interlocking and i'll be dropping in a, a cutaway so you can see exactly what i'm talking about we well, do be careful if you decide to move these i've still got to put these back i'll be taking my time i'll be taking extreme care and I will also be enlisting the services of a plank across to walk across to help me put them back. When I put them back, I start off at the opposite end, obviously, and come back in this direction. And I'm going to get them back on very quickly. I don't want anyone falling down there and I don't want any hedgehogs falling down there. So I'm not gonna leave any of these chambers open overnight, just in case a hedgehog falls down. Now I used a company called EnviroCare to get mine emptied. I'll put their details in the description box below. They were excellent, it cost me about 200 quid. They were here about an hour and it was virtually next day service. And I got them via a company called Nick Brooks. So I will also put Nick Brooks details in the description box below this video. I think the national, national company, but you can check them out. But in any event, you can just Google septic tank emptying. So. I hope that video has sort of dispelled any great mystery or fears that you've got about septic tanks. There's nothing to be afraid of. They're there, they're real, they're not high tech. Pretty solid state stuff actually. And it's quite easy to diagnose where your problem is because you just follow it through. Now on a modern one, there would be one of those inspection covers every five meters or so, but I've got them at random distances along the pipe but in any event I can still track the waste as it goes through and ends up in that chamber. My problem is beyond the chamber in the soak away but that's for another video altogether. I'm doing this because I'm putting an ensuite in the garage and that ensuite will waste, will drain away the waste into my existing septic tank. Hope you've enjoyed that. I'll see you soon for some more septic tank adventures. Thank you.